Welcome to A Beer with Brad, episode four. Tonight, I'm gonna to talk about some of my photographic inspirations. But before that, let's talk about the beer. So for tonight, I picked a Script Town Porter. It's a Prospect Hill Porter, which is Prospect Hill's a neighborhood in Omaha. Um, and Script Town is in the Blackstone neighborhood here in Omaha. They opened in 2014. Um, I don't know if I'd call them one of the early people of the Blackstone District, but they're definitely, they were towards the beginning and they've been around and seen that neighborhood just blossom into a, a great neighborhood and a uh, great place to go enjoy a beer. So, uh, Script Town, Prospect Hill Porter. Um, porters are one of my, one of my go-tos. I really like them. It's kind of a, they're a dark beer, but they're not real heavy. They have a nice earthy flavor and uh you know a lot of a lot of breweries do a really good porter so they're pretty easy to find so uh this one's a little bit different has some uh cocoa nibs in it so has a little bit of different flavor but it's still a, a nice easy drinking beer so before we get started with some of the photography inspirations a uh, couple things uh, this weekend you will be able to bid on this omaha skyline uh, aerial photo at the uh, Great Plains Paralyzed Veterans of America Golf Tournament. Uh, it's one of the plaque mounts. It's ready to hang, hangs on the wall uh, about an inch away, so it looks like it's floating. It's called a float plaque. Um, I've been donating a picture to the uh, Great Plains PVA for, I wanna say the better part of a decade now. A great organization, every year they have a golf tournament to help raise money and uh, I always give them a nice photo that you can bid on. And I believe if you go to the Great Plains Paralyzed Veterans website, uh, I believe they're doing the auction online this year. So uh, it'd be a good good cause and you get one of my photos with it. So um, also going on this weekend is the 55th, I don't even know where, we lost track because last year was uh, no art fair, but like the, 52nd, 53rd, 55th uh, annual Countryside Village Art Fair. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't done an art fair since the spring of this Countryside Village in 2019. So uh, June 2019, Countryside Village Art Fair. And then the end of, in September 2019, we had our daughter. So I didn't get to do the art fair that year. And then COVID wiped out all the art fairs in 2020. So looking forward to my first art fair, 2021 first art fair in two years. Uh, art fairs are great. It's great to just get out and have all my photos displayed. Um, you, you know, I don't get to have them all hung up in one place very often. So it's really cool to see, you know, all my work from over the years hung up on the, on the walls of my tent. Uh, it's great to mingle with people, talk to them about the art. Um, they ask a lot of questions as you know, we've, the first three episodes pretty much covered things from the art fair. So yeah. it's always a nice weekend. It's always nice and warm and it's just, it's good to get out and and have fun and enjoy the art fair and mingle with the other artists and really looking forward to it. Um, one more housekeeping. Oh, uh, if, if you followed me for very long, you also know I do a lot of work with Grow Omaha. Uh, Trent and Jeff have the Grow Omaha radio show that's been going on for uh, 15, 16 years, maybe a little longer. I've been working with them for well over a decade now. Uh, I'm a regular fill-in contributor on the show. Also, uh, co-host every now and then, um, do the call-in show every quarter. And then we also started the Grow Omaha YouTube channel recently. So the last two months I've put out a construction update video. So if you're interested in things going on around the Omaha metro area with construction, check out, go to growomaha.com and then look for the uh, Grow Omaha construction update video or you can go to YouTube and find Grow Omaha and it's on there too. So my goal is to do that monthly, uh, doing this Beer with Brad monthly. So I got Two monthly videos now to kind of put together. Uh, to, I like to put the beer with bread out the first Thursday of the month. And so today's the first Tuesday of the month. I uh, just got back from vacation, kind of rushing to put it out and I was kind of torn because uh, outside there was just a really nice sunset tonight. And you know me, you know me I'm just kind of a sucker for a, a nice sunset photo. So uh, I really wanted to get out there and take this picture, but I figured I better get my video done, stick to my self-imposed deadline so I keep it going. You know, if I don't, if I don't break it, I keep it, the longer I keep it going, the easier it will be to keep uh, following the deadlines. So here we are, episode four already.
So tonight I kind of just want to talk about some of my photography inspirations. Um, when I first got into photography, I think I explained it that uh, it was a black and white film class in high school. And, you know, if, when you're taking black and white film, you know, everyone's uh, inspiration is pretty much always Ansel Adams, or at least, you know, most people. So, uh, of course, I was one of those people and got into black and white photography and thought I was going to run out and uh, photograph all these awesome black and white landscapes, uh, go out to Yosemite. One of my first photography trips, first two really photography trips were to Yosemite. Uh, got actually behind the camera there is a four foot tall or actually four foot wide sitting outside right now. Uh, panoramic of Half Dome. Uh, got to hang that up on the wall. But uh, And I still I still love black and white, but the, the funny thing is now that I uh, have digital image or digital camera and have the computer and everything. I just don't ever get around to making black and white photos like I used to. You'll see, like this winter, I posted four snow fog photos that all looked black and white, but they were actually color photos. I didn't do anything to decrease the saturation on them. Uh, every once in a while, someone will see a skyline photo and they they'll want to see what it looked like in black and white, and maybe buy a print of it in black and white. And I do convert them, and half the time I get done with the conversion, I was like. Why don't I do this more often? I mean, they really, they turn out cool. They have a whole different look to them. Uh, you know, black and white usually has, you a lot of times has a little more contrast to it. Not always, but a little more contrast. They really have this like, I don't know, really vivid look to them, even though there's no color in them. And I always enjoy them, uh, but I never, never really get around to taking them like I should, like I used to. So I think maybe it will be a goal one of these years is shoot more black and white. Um, after I got, I, mean, I left photography for a while and then got back into photography, my next inspiration was probably Thomas Mangelson. And, you know, he used to have a gallery here in Omaha and you'd go buy this awesome panoramic book, you know, with all the different wildlife and landscapes in it. Uh, I still really enjoy Thomas Mangelson's work. Um, he's, uh, does a lot of wildlife, but he does like wildlife in, in I, I call it like a landscape wildlife where it's not just a picture of the animal usually, it's a picture of the animal with a really cool landscape around it. And my inspiration is not to you know, necessarily run out and copy what he did, but you know, when I'm out photographing the cranes, I should be looking for more of a landscape shot with, uh, with the cranes in it, or when I'm doing the bald eagles or pelicans around here, I really need to work on getting more of a, a, a landscape picture. Uh, I have all the close-ups, and the close-ups are, I don't know, they're they're what they are. Um, they're cool, but at some point it's like you need a new challenge or a new adventure, and I really think that uh, going out and trying to get more wildlife in a landscape where, you know, where the animal is still big enough, but, you know, it's just part of the landscape. So um, I was out in Grand Teton National Park a couple of years ago, and there, uh, there was this, I was, it was my last day, I was getting ready to go home, and I decided, all right, I'm going to put everything away and just head towards the park and enjoy the park as I'm leaving on the way out. And there's only like a mile or two to the exit. And I get in the car, put everything away, and I start driving and come up over the ridge, and there's this beautiful, giant bull elk, just perfect rack, huge, glowing in the morning sun, looking right into the sun and the Tetons were just lit perfectly behind them. And I pulled over and I tried to grab that camera, but you know, he was out of there. I still got a picture, but it was, he was three times further away from me than when I, when I first came over that hill. And after that, I was like, I'm never putting my camera away until I'm home. I always try to leave it on my seat now. So, cause you, you just never know what you're going to see when you're out there. So, uh, it, that's, that's the, the one that still makes me think the most about it, but there's been other times where I've come across things like that. So, uh, Thomas Mangelson, I really enjoy his work. Um, he just has so many neat photos. And then, um, one of the people I more recent, a younger photographer who's probably pretty close to me in age, Ben Horn, um, he has this new book, uh, Between the Winds. He shoots uh, large format films, so, between the Winds is kind of reference when you're shooting large format film, they're really long exposures and uh, the wind can't be blowing the leaves or you just won't have uh, very still, clear images. So uh, really, really like this book. 
the inspiration I get from Ben is, you know, he isn't out there shooting the grand landscapes and he's not out there shooting the iconic pictures. That was one of the things that when I first started doing these photography trips, all I want to do is run around and collect the icons, so to speak. You know, it's like collecting baseball cards. I'm going to go take a picture of uh, the wave and I'm going to go take a picture of uh, Archangel Falls. I'm going to take a picture of Yosemite Falls and then I'm going to go up to the Tetons and get the Oxbow Bend. And it was just like, I don't know, after a while, if you, if you don't get the perfect weather conditions, you've seen a million shots of that, you know what it looks like. And it just wasn't, it, it was that same trip with elk where I was just kind of like, why am I doing this? Why am I not? I'm passing up so many cool, interesting pictures to get pictures that there's a million, a million copies of. And it's so Ben Horn really, he just slows down and looks for smaller scenes, you know, not grand landscapes more. I mean, sometimes he even takes a picture of the size of this tabletop and it just, you know, there'd be ice in the river with the ripples and leaves and or ripples and rocks and just such cool things in such a little space, you know, things that I walk past that I would never even think about. And yeah, you know, I do that on my own trips. I just need to slow down and pay attention to what I, what I have in front of me and not you know, take the picture when you're there, not what you think you're, is up over the next hill. So, uh, other than that, uh, you know, I've said in a, in a previous video, Nick Carver, uh, he's one of the, the kind of architectural cityscape guys that I like. Takes pictures of old buildings. Um, you know, he has some really cool. It's kind of where I got the inspiration for that. The, if you follow me on social media, there was a picture recently with Broncos um, restaurant here in Omaha. And it's kind of seeing him photograph a donut shop that kind of had that same like 70s vibe to it out in California. And you know, when, I, when I get inspiration for these people, I try to take what they're doing in other parts of the country, other parts of the world, and just you know apply that same thought process to to what I do here. And so you know it's not about copying what they're doing, but it's more about you know thinking the way they think and seeing things they see and open my eyes to uh, new things out there. A few of my other photographic influences would be uh, Thomas Heaton. He has a great YouTube channel. Uh, he's over in Europe, does a lot of uh, landscape stuff that's just not the uh, iconic scene. He's out hunting for more smaller landscapes. Um, he does everything from uh, film to digital, uh, kind of all over the map, but he, he has a unique spin he puts on things. Um, always always interesting to see what he's doing. Uh, he's part of, he did a, a group photography uh, I don't know what you want to call it. They call it the F4 road trip uh, with uh, oh, yeah, Nick Page and uh, um, Gavin Hardcastle and uh, oh, Uncle Grumpy. What's Uncle Grumpy's? Uh, Adam Gibbs. Uh, and then they had uh, Greg Snell, who has a YouTube channel also. All those guys have YouTube channels. Uh, Greg was their, their videographer for the trip, and he also did some cameos as some uh, wacky guy in there. It was kind of a fun, fun, uh, or, uh, fun photography series. I hope they bring it back and do it again. I uh, really enjoyed seeing those. Um, they all kind of do, uh, they'll go shoot the exact same place and then come up with uh, a lot of unique you know, unique compositions on their own. Uh, there's also two uh, European photographers I really like, uh, Nigel Danielson and Simon Baxter. Uh, they do a lot of woodland stuff and I, I think there's a lot of thought and principles you could do with their European woodland stuff to something you could do here in the Los Hills or in some of the wooded areas around the Omaha area. So uh, I have fun watching those guys and try to try to think of how I can incorporate stuff like that. Because, you know, in, around here we have farm fields, rolling hills, and, you know, woods. And there there's not a ton of photographic interest in, in my mind, I mean, some of it there is, but there's a lot of distractions too that I don't like. I mean, like Nick Page goes up to the Palouse in Washington and their like rolling farm fields are amazing. They're like pristine. You don't see anything. You don't see fence posts. You don't see wires. You don't see random shacks and whatnot here. Around around here, everything is just, there's distractions. If we could get just rolling corn fields and rolling bean fields and rolling wheat fields with nothing of them, it'd be so much more fun to photograph, but uh, that's a whole different story. But uh, Simon and uh, Nigel, they do a lot of woodland stuff, and um, 
a lot of cool old trees, forests. You know, I think a lot of that could be, some of those principles could be applied around here. Uh, the only thing is our forest around here seem to grow up like the undergrowth, the weeds just grow way more. Over there they have like nice pristine grasses that go right up to the trunks of the trees. Sometimes there's wildflowers mixed in. So I wish we had a little more of that, but we don't. Um, and then some of the other, I don't know if I even call them influences, but like, inspiration for sure uh you know, watch hiking videos from people that hike um there's a guy uh, joey uh Cocken, Cocconado? Cocconado? um uh and john hermoso um these guys go like crazy long days on end you know 7 10 14 day hikes in the back country and they see some of the most amazing scenes stuff you've never seen before all these high alpine lakes and I get a lot of inspiration from watching those guys thinking you know there's this tiny little lake out there that is not photographed that's beautiful that you know someday I wish I could get up to and hike I don't know if I could do 14 days in the back country maybe someday but um, definitely some of these lakes that are only like a day or two day you know hike up one day hike back down I've done stuff like that before uh, so there's a lot that gives me uh, ideas of you know future things I can get out and photograph uh, when I'm not here in the in the Nebraska area. So uh, I don't know. I just I find so many people out there doing so many cool things in photography that I'm always just like clicking on the next video and watching the next you know scene uh, where they're going and um, so many cool things. I I don't know. I just the ideas and the the possibilities are endless and the amount of time I have is not endless so uh, it's it's fun watching them though and it's fun getting inspired by other people and seeing seeing what they do and again like I said it's not about going out and copying what they do it's just about seeing their thought process the way they think about photos and the you know the hikers just the way they love getting out and the being out in the middle of nowhere and exploring it's just all very inspirational I really like it so. Other than that, um, I don't currently have a lot of uh, uh, other influences. Uh, like I said, uh, Nick Carver and Ben Horn were kind of also the influences for this Beer with Brad. I kind of took to, you know, with the kind of videos they did and kind of blended in my own. Nick does a behind the glass with the glass where he tries a different liquor and uh, talks about some of the photography. And then Ben Horn used to have a weekly, now it's kind of monthly or sporadic. Um, video where he'd talk about a photography subject. So I kind of blended the two styles together to make this beer with bread. Uh, other than that, I think that's going to do it. Um, I hope you can all stop by the art fair this weekend at Countryside Village. It's uh, Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 5. I don't think I said that earlier in the video. I should have. Um, I just got back from the Badlands, so hopefully there are some new Badlands photos coming out. Uh, if you follow me on social media, you probably saw um, some previews, some cell phone pictures and whatnot of the Badlands. Uh, the first night of the Badlands was crazy. We weren't actually in the Badlands. We we're still in Nebraska in the sand hills and this storm came through and it was just pouring down rain or, you know, as uh, some of the, the European photographers say, it was chucking it down, which I always laugh when I hear that. I like that, that expression. Um, and then all of a sudden the sun came out and there was a beautiful rainbow. There was just dramatic clouds. It was just, it came together. The only problem, I was just running around like crazy. Do I photograph this? Should I photograph that? You know, and the rainbow popped out. I'm trying to find a composition for the rainbow, but I'm still watching the horizon for the sunset. And then across the lake was these really cool uh, shadows on the hills. So. I don't know if I got anything from that first night, but uh, I know some of the pictures in the Badlands came out really cool. I'm really looking forward to some of those. Uh, I have a couple that I have done and getting ready to put out on social media and on my website pretty soon. Uh, and then I also just two days ago got back from a family trip to Michigan, and I did get a really cool sunset picture and maybe even a sailboat picture. Um, a sunset picture at a lighthouse in it. You probably saw it on social media if you follow me on that. Um, I didn't really have a ton of time for photography. I had some ideas and just never really got around to it. So uh, there'll be another trip to Michigan in the future. Hopefully I can maybe sneak in a little more photography time. I know there's some sand dunes up there that I'd like to check out and uh, maybe look for a few other things. But thanks again for tuning in to episode four. I hope you uh, 
you know, enjoy these videos. If you ever have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comment section below or hit me up on social media. Uh, like I said, Twitter, Facebook are the best, um, or even the comments on YouTube. I'm terrible at Instagram, uh, finding the comments on Instagram. I don't know why. I just know that I never see the notifications for some reason. So, uh, and then uh, you can always email me. There's a contact form on my website. So thanks again. Uh, see you next month.